Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Our fathers, we open thy word to study today. Give us wisdom, direct us by the Spirit of God. Speak to my heart and speak through these lips of clay to the unseen thousands in Radio Land for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, today I'm using a subject that may sound a little bit fanatical to some of you, but to many of you it's just good sound gospel. I'm preaching today on guaranteed victory. Guaranteed victory. Now listen, there are people listening to my voice today who have said, and maybe you're saying, in your heart, if I knew that I could be a victorious Christian, then I'd be saved. But I've seen so many, so many, you say. I've seen so many up and down, in and out, on and off, and I've seen so many start and make a failure. I just don't want to start, and I just don't want to be saved because I'm just afraid that I can't live the victorious life. Now, I'm speaking on guaranteed victory. Now, I'm going to use five or six scriptures as time permits. The first one, I want to say that we have guaranteed victory because of what Jesus is to us when we're saved. Now, let me say that again. We have guaranteed victory in Jesus because of what he is to us who are saved. Now, in, in, in Hebrews 2, verse 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Now listen. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. Now, wait a minute. The only way in the world you'll ever become a son of God and the only way you'll ever step inside the pearly gates is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him as your personal Savior. Now, you can't be saved until you trust Jesus. And when you trust Jesus Christ, take him by faith, you're saved. All right, to bring many sons into glory. Now, listen, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now, those words refer to the Son of God and his death on the cross to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now, I want to stop right here and say again, we who trust Jesus have guaranteed victory because of what he is to us who are saved. He's the captain, praise God. He is the captain of our salvation. Now listen, if Jesus Christ is the captain of the salvation ship, then God bless you, he knows the way home, he knows the way to heaven, and thank God, he is my guide, and he is my captain. Now, listen, it doesn't make a difference to me what you think, or what you say, or what you've heard, or what anybody's preached. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, let me tell you something. It was God in the beginning who had a conference with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost uh, attending, and it was agreed that Jesus would shed his blood on a rugged cross that sinners might be saved. And in the fullness of time, Jesus came into the world and laid his life down, and he shed his blood that we might have salvation through his blood. Now, he is the author, he is the beginner, he is the finisher, he is the climax of our faith. Now, let me show you something. He is our salvation. He is the captain of our salvation. He is the way to heaven. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Now, listen. He's our captain. He's our salvation. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. But now, listen. He is the door. He said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Now, Jesus is all that I need, thank God. So, 
I know that in Jesus I have sure victory because of what he is. He's the captain of the gospel ship, hallelujah. He's the captain of the salvation ship, praise God. He's the door to heaven, and he's the way to heaven. He's the truth about heaven, and he's the life, thank God, that will raise us from the dead. So, sure victory, guaranteed victory, because of what Jesus is, thank God. Now then, in the second place, I want to say that we have, those of us who have Jesus, we have guaranteed victory, and I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, same chapter, and here's what we find. We have guaranteed victory, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus, also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is guaranteed victory because of what he has done. It's finished. It is finished. John 19, 30. It is finished. We have guaranteed victory, not only because of what he is, but thank God what he's done. Now, Jesus took upon himself a flesh body, a body of flesh. What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. And thank God, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, Jesus has done in the flesh. It is completed. It is finished. It is all finished. He has done in the flesh what no mortal could have ever done. He conquered the world, the flesh, the devil, death, hell, and the grave. And I am more than conqueror through him. And you are too, if you're saved. Guaranteed victory because of what Jesus has done. Listen, beloved. He tasted death for every man. He destroyed him that had the power of death, that is the devil. He has purchased blessed assurance for every person who will put their faith and trust in his completed work. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's the beginner. He's the completer of our wonderful salvation. We trust he is the captain of the salvation ship. Praise God. And he knows the way. He knows the storms. He knows the route that will take us safe into the pearly gates, and when we get there, he is the door. So I don't have to worry about entering. Guaranteed victory because of what he is, because of what he's done, and thank God because of the victories that Jesus has won. Turn to Colossians chapter 2, and I want to read a precious, precious passage of Scripture. Colossians chapter 2, beginning with verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances... That was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're not under law. We're not under rituals. We're not under programs. We're not under this or that. Now listen. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of a new moon, or of a Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. All right, I say that we have guaranteed victory because of the victories he has already won. Not going to win, but he's already won them. He has already conquered everything that hell hurled at him. Listen, beloved. Every jot and every tittle of the Old Testament law and prophets were fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I came not to destroy the law and the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. Before the Son of God bowed his head on his pulseless breast and passed his spirit back to the Heavenly Father, he said, it is finished. Praise God. He had completed every demand, every command, every wish every desire of a holy God. And we are more than conquerors through him because of the victories he has already won. Listen, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. 
The Son of God nailed everything to the cross that would damn us. The Son of God nailed everything to the cross that would stand between us and God's holiness. Everything that said you cannot enter heaven, Jesus carried it to the cross. He nailed it to the cross. He paid the complete penalty. And when he bowed his head, he could say to the Father, It is finished. And today, he says to you, he says to me, Come unto me and I'll give you rest. Come unto me, I will in no wise cast you out. Confess your sins, I'll forgive them. Call on me and I'll save you. Receive me and I'll put your name in the family register. Who could ask for more? I said, we have guaranteed victory because of what he is. He's the captain of our salvation. Thank God we have guaranteed victory because of what he has done. He destroyed the power of the devil that would damn us. In the third place, we have guaranteed victory because of the victories that Jesus has already won. I've read so far Hebrews 2.10, Hebrews 2.14, and Colossians 2.15. Now then, we have guaranteed victory because of His blessed assurance. I want you to turn to John's Gospel, chapter 16, and I want to read a precious verse. And here's what it says. He's talking to the disciples who are discouraged. They're downhearted. And he's encouraging these dear boys who are facing a very unfriendly and a very ungodly world. And yet he assures them that they have nothing to fear. They have nothing to dread. They have nothing to worry about. In, in, in John 16, 33, these things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. Now listen. These things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Yes, in the world you'll have tribulation. In the world you'll have trials and testings. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Now listen. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now I want to stop. And I want to talk to you. And I want you to listen to me, dear sinner. And dear defeated Christian, listen to what I'm going to say. The Son of God moved into this world in a body, just like your body, just like my body, without sin. He had flesh. He became hungry. He became tired. He became weary. He was disappointed. He wept. Uh, disappointed in people. He wept over the city of Jerusalem. And beloved, I could go on down the line. He had a body just like yours, except your sin and my sin. He had no sin. He did no sin. He knew no sin. But he had a body. He had a body of flesh. Now listen, he moved into this world. And in the world, he was tested. He was tried. He was tempted in all points as we are. Through the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, every avenue that hell can use to tempt souls, the Son of God met the devil on his own territory, met the devil in his own kingdom, met the devil face to face, and thank God Jesus conquered the world. In the world you will have tribulation. You'll be tried. You'll be tested. You'll be persecuted. But cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. I have overcome the world. Remember, dear Christian, remember the Son of God has never asked you, and he never will ask you. He has never asked me, nor will he ever ask me, to walk a path that he didn't walk before us. He, the Son of God, walked the path before he'll ever ask you or me to walk it. Remember that. He was tested. He was tempted. He was tried in all points as we are, yet he never sinned. Therefore, he can say to you, and he can say to me, be of good cheer, be of good cheer, be not dismayed, be not downhearted. I have overcome the world. Now, I say we have guaranteed victory. We're not hoping we'll make it to heaven. We're not hoping we'll get to heaven. We're not hoping that we'll be overcomers. In Jesus, we're more than conquerors, but it's only in Jesus. You can't do it. I can't do it. The flesh can't do it, but the Holy Ghost within us can do it. Now I move on because my time is slipping away. I say we have victory, guaranteed victory because of what he is. He's the captain of our salvation, Hebrews 2.10. Because of what he has done, he destroyed the devil that had the power of death, Hebrews 2.14. 
because of the victories Jesus won. Colossians 2, 15, he conquered all the principalities and the powers of the devil, and he nailed all of the things against us to his cross. Hallelujah. And he put them to an open shame. Then I said, because of the assurance we have in John 16, 33, yes, we are overcomers because he overcame. Now then, I want to say that we have guaranteed victory on the authority of his promise in his word. Now, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. All right, that's verse 12. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. Look out. When you get to the place that you think you're big enough to overcome the devil, look out. When you get to the place that you think you're strong enough to overcome sin, look out. When you think, God bless you, that you can pilot your own ship, Look out, my friend, you're headed for the worst storm that you've ever met in all your life. But thank God, listen, let him that thing of thee stand take heed lest he fall. But thank God, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now I want to ask you in the name of common sense, who could ask for more? Who could hope for more? Who could desire more? Listen to me, sinner friend. Listen to me, defeated church member. Listen to me, backslidden Christian. Who could ask for more? Who could desire any more? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer, will not allow you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now that means exactly this. Are you listening to me? That means that the Son of God will not let the devil put anything upon you, but that God will provide and make a way of escape if you'll give God a chance to do it. Now, you, you might as well face it. If you can't believe that, you can't believe John 3.16. If you can't believe that, you can't believe the 23rd Psalm. Listen to me. The Bible says, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe that? You say, sure I do. Do you believe this? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside. You believe that? You say, sure I believe that. All right, why can't you believe this? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, every man. But God is faithful. Why can't you believe that? Why can't you believe that? You say, preacher, I'd get saved. I'd be saved if I just thought and if I knew and if I had the assurance that I could live the Christian life, overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, if I had that assurance, Brother Green, I'd be saved, I'd be saved. Well, I want to say this. The only reason you don't have it simply because you won't believe God. Now, God said, I will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but I will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, I don't care what it is. You say, preacher, I'm a drunkard. That's all right. You say, I'm a liar. That's all right. You say, I'm a thief. That's all right. You say, I'm a dog. That's all right. You say, preacher, I'm a murderer. That's all right. You say, preacher, I hate. That's all right. Listen, God Almighty will save you from those things, and then God will give you victory over those things. Now, listen, if you can't believe that verse of Scripture, you can't believe any of it. And if John 3.16 is truth, this is truth. All Scripture is inspired of God and is profitable for us. Now, that verse of Scripture is for you. That verse of Scripture is for me. It is ours, and I'm claiming it, thank God. And I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to live by it, and I'm going to heaven, praise God, because Jesus is my Savior. He's the captain of salvation. He's the author of my faith. He's the finisher of my faith. He's my victory, praise God. He is my conqueror. And in Jesus, I am more than conqueror. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted. Above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Listen, I'm giving you today the assurance of guaranteed victory because of what Jesus is. 
He's the captain of our salvation. Hebrews 2.10. Because of what he has done, he destroyed him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. Hebrews 2.14. I say we have guaranteed victory because of his victories that are already won. Colossians 2.15. I say we have guaranteed victory because of his assurance in the world, you'll be tried, but I have overcome the world. I say we have guaranteed victory because of what he says. He says, I will not let the devil tempt you above that ye are able, but I will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, let me tell you something. If you go to hell, it's your fault. If you're defeated, it's your fault. God has promised, God has provided, and God has made possible sure victory. So bow your head, close your eyes, confess your sins, ask God to save you if you're a sinner. And if you are a defeated Christian, if you are a backslidden church member, God help you to surrender all and let Jesus give you the victory right now. It's for you if you'll receive it and trust Jesus for it. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every soul in Radio Land that is defeated by the devil, they've been born again, yes, Father, but they are not living as a Christian should live. I pray this will be the happy day that they'll bow their heads and their hearts where they are and surrender all and claim victory in his victorious name. Our Father, those who are listening today who are out of the ark of safety, they've never been born again. God grant this be the day that they'll surrender to Jesus and be saved. May every sinner listening to this voice now in the great unseen radio audience, may everyone come to Jesus and receive him before it's everlastingly too late. I follow there may be somebody listening today that will never hear another gospel broadcast. This may be the last prayer they'll ever hear prayed. This may be the last program they'll ever hear, Father, this side of eternity. And I pray that you'll help them to do today, right now, this moment, what they'll be glad to do when they stand before God. Honor thy word, honor the shed blood, and we'll give God the praise in Jesus' dear name. Amen.